And with the next few breaths, just let yourself enjoy all the parts, the inhale filling up, the fullness of the breath, the letting it go, the emptying out, and then the emptiness of the breath. So that each part feels really nourishing for you. And as you're inhaling, I invite you to call in all parts of yourself that are in like, got to do it, got to get it done, got to make this happen off in the future or ruminating about the past or something like that. Just call all these parts back into this now moment, into this space that you're occupying right now. And just send in a, a grounding cord for yourself to be really connected in this physical moment, this physical reality within yourself, feeling that grounding cord that extends all the way up into the center of your being, the Hara. If you don't know where that is, then it's just wherever the center of your being feels like it is. With the next few breaths, just let your body release any tension that just doesn't need to be there. Let your body relax. Any muscles that don't need to be operating, let them go. And let the next few breaths really come into the mind and create spaciousness there and a curiosity, a receptivity that opens to something new, new possibilities, new wisdom, new inspiration. Your spirit guided you to take time out of your day to be here, to receive something. So allow your mind to be open and available to that. And, and then with the next few breaths dropping into the heart and feeling the prayer that you're creating for your life through your business, through your relationships. And then start expanding that awareness to all of the prayers of the women who are on this call, the prayers that they have and the desire we all naturally have to be together as a community supporting each other and up-leveling our reality as a mastermind, as a sister mind tuning into that bigger and weaving ourselves together with our prayers. All right. And then just taking the last few moments to just honor anything that's real for you maybe that you haven't acknowledged yet a, a difficulty or some awesome thing that you did today, but something that you've just been going throughout your day without fully acknowledging for yourself, I'm tired or I'm angry or I fucking rocked today. You know, whatever it is you'd like to acknowledge about yourself, take a few breaths for that. And then as you complete with that, we're going to drop in and listen and you can um, unmute yourself if, you've, if you're in a quiet place. If you've got noise in the background, please keep yourself muted. But if, if we could allow the Tracys, our Tracys, to uh, see your beautiful faces, if you could turn your video on, if that's a possibility. And I know some of you are here on the phone, so you don't have a video. Um, so that we can drop into the, the real live time you. And, uh, and then what I'd like to do now is, um, is to introduce the Tracys. I've, been a, I've had the honor of sitting with both of these lovely women in deep ceremonial space and have just a lot of respect and admiration for them and feel a 
a lot of um, warmth towards the two of you. And I'm just going to say a little bit that um, their calling and passion is to help leaders to develop a deeper connection with their community, create a global movement to touch more lives by supporting leaders to help them share their gifts, message, and passion to ignite a positive ripple in the world. Together, they have over 30 years of combined experience in, in producing events of anywhere from five to 5,000 people. Oh my God. Um, they've helped their clients earn over $10 million and have learned some tricks of the trade, I bet, that will save you time, money, and energy. And without further ado, I turn the talking stick over to Tracy Wiseman, Tracy Buckley. Thank you so much. Oh, you're on mute. Tracy, you're muted. Unmute yourself. We didn't want to hear you. There we go. I just missed. I said thank you so much, Amanda. You're such a light. I love you so much. Um, well, we're really excited. Um, we kind of created this huge PowerPoint presentation, so we're just going to wait for it so that we've got time for you guys to ask those questions that you you know, those burning questions that you have, because we know that you're all leaders, and we know a lot of you are already doing events, and so there may be some things that, that pop up. There's, a, you know, we really want you to just keep an open mind today. There may be some new tip that you haven't heard about. So, you know, our goal really is for you to walk away with just one thing that will make a difference to your business, because we want you to be successful. Um, so we're gonna share, Grace, you want to go ahead and share the PowerPoint? Yes, I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. It'll take me just a minute to actually get to the full PowerPoint, so bear okay. with me. Great. And there we are. Yay. Okay, so our theme today, we could have talked about a million things, but it's um, focused on influence. So how to build influence in your events and retreats. So we're going to take about 20 minutes. We're going to um, go through the slides and if you have any questions just feel free to write them down because uh, we will be having a Q&A at the end um, So let's go ahead and go to the next slide trace Okay I'm, I'm like all right. I know they enjoy this one <laughs> I, I love it when we have uh, when we have technology challenges Okay and this is such a great time because we've just had the full super blood red wolf moon and it's like it's all about creating and new beginnings and and uh, what a great time to start putting in your mind what you want your next event retreat to look like. So okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out one second and get it figured out. I apologize. Okay. Okay. So, so I'll just kind of keep moving ahead. Um, so today, really, we're going we're gonna to go over some tips on, uh, 10 tips on how to create a un unique experience. We're going to go over what to not do at event or retreat. And then we're going to give you some insider secrets to save money at your retreats. So that, that's going to be our main focus for today. Um, and we, yeah. there we are. Yay, Jesse. All right, so the first thing we want to talk to you about is really just dreaming a little bit bigger. So we know that you are incredible leaders and that you have just your own gift and message to really help serve so many people. So we want to make sure that you know that you can do it. And so this is one of our kind of our visionaries that we utilize to like when we're dreaming, we're like, yes, we'll be over the water bungalow here in Bora Bora. So um, let's get started. Oh gosh. Okay, it's not letting me share, it's not letting me change the slide when I'm in share mode. So it looks oh. like this is not gonna work out, Trace, or remote. Okay, well we'll just we'll just talk through it then. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Trace. Okay. That's all right, Technology. sorry. Technology. Okay. Okay. So right. um, well, I'm Tracy Wiseman. And I'm Tracy Buckley. And, and together we are Live Your Bliss Travel and Events. And our focus is to really take your events to the next level in whatever way that means. And as Amanda said, we've done events from five to 5,000, but we always like to talk, meet people where they're at and just look at what is that big vision? You know, if you could, you know, if there were no time or money constraints, where do you dream to go with your community? Where is it that you see yourself? 
Uh, what experiences do you want to create that really impact them as well as allow you to have a lot of fun? Because we think sometimes that fun is missing in events. So we like to like fun it up. So, okay, Trace. Yeah, I'm just turning my phone off. It, I muted it, but it keeps going. Um, so did you want to tell a little bit, Trace, about how we met? Because it's actually kind of funny. <laughs> So uh, in 2014, I left corporate America. I like to say I escaped, but I mean, I was released. So um, in that point, I just decided to begin my entrepreneurial journey. And I knew what I wanted to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to get there. So I just decided uh, you know, to investigate some coaching opportunities. So I went to an event or two, and it was about my third event that I went to that I really, really felt called with regards to the coaches. And so I decided to invest. And as I went, and I have to tell you, I was there and the whole way, I don't know if you guys have any clients like this that are like, I'm not buying anything, I'm not buying anything, right? And then you get there and you're like, oh my gosh, this is it, okay. So I walked up to turn in my application for the coaching program and Tracy Weisman was actually working production at this event. And when I handed it to her, it had like a description of what I did and she was like, oh my gosh, you know, that's kind of what I do, that's what I wanna do. And I said, oh wow, you know, and she's like, we should work together. So we exchanged information. It was a very light conversation. And then we ended up doing a, a follow-up call about three weeks later. And on that call, I was actually doing some research and market, market research and asking some questions. And as we were discussing the different elements, we realized like, seriously, we're like twin souls on the planet. Like we have so many random things. Not only our first name is the same, but like our childhood nickname is the same. Our family dynamic is the same. You know, we drink coffee through a straw, even hot coffee. I mean, like just all these weird little things over the time. So we just are like, oh my gosh, this is destined to be. Obviously, you know, one and one, you know, those two individuals come together and make that three, third more powerful mind. So we are here really trying to shake it up and really create events that change lives and also, you know, create an impact and support leaders that have that voice that, that we know we can help you to support re and reach more people. So we had a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So um, I'm, you know, live events are the fastest way to build your business. Uh, and, and not only building your business, but, but creating influence, standing out. Um, and what we find, especially in retreats but also in any kind of an event is that that's where a lot of healing and a lot of transformation and, and um, deep wounds are a lot of times healed when they're in community when you're in community with other people so we're very passionate about bringing people together um, you know in the world that we live in now which is so technology driven people are actually craving having that personal interaction and creating those those memories together so um, that's, that's why we tell everybody, you know, do an event. We, we have people that teach online, you know, their whole platform is online and they teach you how to build your business online and they do live events because they recognize the power of getting like-minded people in a room. So I do want to talk a little bit about that. And then I'm just curious if you could raise your hand, how many people have um, done an event or retreat or planning on doing one or... Okay, great, great. That's what we thought. Yeah. 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 So we, are, we have a room full of experts here today. We knew yes. that. <laughs> so um, I don't think you've got the handout. We put, we put together a lovely handout for you to take notes. So uh, feel free to just take notes if, if you want to. But really, what we wanted you to do right now was just to take a minute and, you know, play big. Just think, like, what would I want? What would be the ultimate dream experience for me and my clients? Like, would I want to go to Hawaii, go hiking in the waterfalls? Would I want to um, you know, take a, a jungle safari in Africa? Would I want to, um, there's, I mean, there's so many things that you could do, but I want you to just think for a second, what would that look like? How many people would you have there? And what kind of experience and transformation would you want to provide? Because that's really what you want to do when you start thinking about event, is start thinking from, from like what, what kind of experience, from the authentic who you are, right? Because when you experience who you are, you're gonna attract your clients. So just want to um, 
kind of go through here. Uh, you know, we, we hear from a lot of our clients that they're, um, they've kept themselves small and they haven't really done events because they're afraid they're going to lose money or that nobody will come or that um, they've, they've done it before and it hasn't been successful. So they kind of hold off um, putting themselves out there, being visible and, and creating a, a larger event or retreat. Um, so I want to let you know that in our system, our Passport to Success system, we cover all aspects of what you would need to do for a, an event or a retreat. Um, Tracy, did you want to kind of just go over the, the 10 things we're going to be covering today? Yeah, so, so we put together a list of, based on our experience, of what we consider the top 10 steps to creating a unique event experience that changes lives, builds your influence, and can also be wildly profitable. Because I think there is a mindset where people think like when they do an event, they're gonna, it's gonna cost them a lot of money. And you know, there is there are costs involved, but you wanna make sure that you set yourself up to where it actually is profitable, as well as when you are making your, you know, a lot of times, let me just step back for a second. Many times people talk about making like 10K in a weekend. And, and what that is and what we hear that means is that they sell $10,000 in programs that weekend. And that's awesome. Heck, I would do that. Are you kidding me? Bring it, right? But the other part of that is, is you want to make sure that the event itself can be self-liquidating. So you want to look at other opportunities to where you can monetize some of the aspects, share costs. And so that, you know, you may end up spending a little bit of money towards that 10K, but, you know, a lot of times when you sell programs and you're making 10K in a weekend, it's split up over 12 months of payments, right? Have we ever had that experience? And so, you know, you still have to live on that day to day. So you don't want to walk out of your event in, the, in, a, in a big negative because that can cause a lot of stress. So we really like to focus on setting you up for success. And as Tracy said, we've kind of coined the phrase, and our system is called your passport to success system. And with that, we have 10 key items. So the first one is intention and vision. And then <laughs> killer contract negotiations is number two, which is one of my favorites. I love to negotiate some contracts. Um, then our third is your cheeky event checklist and timeline. I'm going to slow down so you guys are writing. Um, the fourth is monetizing your event with ease. Again, that's kind of what I talked about in the beginning. You, know, you want to look at ways that you can create income within the event. Um, number five is really getting super visible and utilizing your visibility to really fill the room. So that's one of the key things where you hear people, oh, I don't know about my event, you know, I don't have enough people. It's like, okay, you've got to look at the key strategies to filling your room and monetizing your event. You want to make sure that your agenda and your flow align with your overall objectives. So you should be able to listen to the content of your agenda and all of your activities to make it an easy yes for your clients that are attending because it just it, it's a natural progression through the entire event. Um, number seven, you want to hire a kick-ass support team. You know, you have your own genius zone, meaning your gifts. And your gifts is not to do everything. You know, the key to great leadership and also with regards to growing your business beyond yourself is really to you know, get some support, hire the right team, and delegate, delegate, delegate. Um, and then of course, leadership, and leadership begins with you. Um, number nine is creating connection in the room. And number 10 is creating a movement. And these are the 10 tips and the 10 areas that we feel that you know, people need the most support. And so we're gonna break it down a little bit and go into a little bit more in depth with that. So number one is intention and vision. So you really need to, as Dr. Wayne Dyer says, start with the end in mind. So what is your offer? What is your purpose? What is your goal for your event? You know, are you bringing people together to just connect? Are you bringing people together to learn? Are you training? Is it some type of uh, event where you're enrolling them in your next program? So it's training and sales. You know, what is your overall objective? And then when you begin with that end in mind, then you can build everything else around them, including, you know, your timeline and all of those other things. So our super tip really, really, really is, you know, what is the blistastic experience that you're trying to create for your attendees? And, you know, who do you want to serve? 
knowing this and starting with the end in mind means really be clear on what you're offering and what is the transformation or experience that you're trying to create for them. So some of the things that we're seeing with regards to leading edge trends in the industry is really people are getting tired of the same old boring, boring, same as it ever was. All right. So, you know, I don't know about you, but the, the three day sales model has kind of been really, there's a lot of that that goes on and there are people that are still successful with it, but it's almost like people know, like it's going to be a lot of sales and people are trying to enroll people in a program. So if you take it a different way, then you're going to create, you know, interest and you're going to be a little bit more disruptive. And what we're finding is, you know, what we hear from attendees at programs is they feel like when they leave, they're really drained um, from really long days artificial air in the room, uh, you know, fluorescent lighting, bad food, hard chairs. I mean, I hate to be a whiner, but have you ever sat for three days, it's 72 hours in the same chair and you're just like, you leave and it's like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm 110 years old, right? So it's about getting up and stretching. But what we're seeing with a lot of different uh, innovative and, and leading edge leaders is they're actually moving into um, cruising. And so we are actually VIP certified seminars at sea experts. And so what that means is that we work with people to create unique events and destinations all over the world. We work with small groups, we work with large groups, and there's a lot of benefits. Currently, right now on the books for 2019, Jack Canfield is doing a huge event in the Caribbean. We have Oprah who went to Alaska with a bunch of her ladies. And then um, Abraham Hicks has been doing events at sea for almost 10 years and he does three a year this year he's doing alaska the mediterranean and the caribbean so you know a lot of times when people look at that they're like oh you know i don't know about that but there are so many benefits and so many things happening and there's so much that's included that it's really a great value even for people just starting out because there's a lot of perks to doing it that way so that's one of the things we're seeing as well as uh, the other thing that's really really big is really interactive activities. So many of you know this. I'm sure you're, you're, you're wise and you're stages in the event industry. You do a lot of events and you're very successful. But you know, the more activities that you can do, adult learners really learn based on what they already know. So you've got to kind of disrupt what their learning pattern is. You know, you have to touch those three main learning patterns of auditory learning, you know, visual learners and kinesthetic learners. So if you can get people moving, if you can do, you know, partner shares and community interactions and, and, you know, scavenger hunts and just kind of be a little bit more playful with your agenda, you can link any activity back to your content and then it actually lands and people integrate it at a much faster speed. So that's what I have to say, Trace. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oops, I'm sorry, I have one final tip. <laughs> See, if we had the slides, we would be on track. <laughs> so um, our super bonus tip, and we wanna make you guys aware of this, is um, destination retreats, whether it's land or sea, the conversion rate is 61 to 73%. And we can bear witness to that. We have seen it over and over. So just as a, as a reference point, traditional hotel venues, are 22 to 27% conversion, meaning you have 100 people in the room, 23 to 27 people will join your program. And on a destination retreat or event, you will get 61 to 73 people joining your program or purchasing your product. So how's that? And you have a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> um, the next tip we have is um, killer contract negotiation. So what do I mean by that? I mean like don't ask, ask, and ask again. So we just had a we just had a contract, and it was a, a it was an event place that we have done multiple events at over the years, and we went back to renew our contract for 2019, and they really increased their pricing. And uh, they gave us quite a story about how, well, the brand and this and that and everything else. And we just kept asking, ooh, can you do any better? And asking again and asking again and asking again. And lo and behold, we came back with almost the exact same pricing as last year. So I just have to tell you, you know, really contact and connect with the people there, especially if you love the venue and you want to use it over and over. And don't be afraid to ask for more. Or, okay, well, if the price of the room is this much, oof. You know, can we offset it with catering? 
um, can we get a um, overperformance clause? So this is my kind of big tip, and a lot of people who don't, well, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but an overperformance clause means that you contract at a certain rate. So for example, you contract uh, with 20 hotel rooms, right? Because you don't want to like maybe invest in too much of a room block because you can be liable for up to 85% of the overall cost if you don't fill it. Um, and so what you can do is you can start off low and you can contract for 15 rooms, even though you know, you know for sure you're gonna get at least 20, right? So you contract for 15 and then you ask for an overperformance clause and you stagger from there. So at 15 you're contracted and you only have to give the deposit on the 15 room you know, total. And then from there you ask, if I hit 25 rooms, what can I get? And if I hit 30 rooms, what can I get? And if I hit 40 rooms, so if you overperform past the original contract and you have it in writing that you will get additional benefits, you will. So there's a lot of advantages in negotiation with regards to key perks and things. The bigger your room block, the more money they're making, the more they will give you. But if you start off with a huge room block, you could end up with not as many rooms as you need and end up paying fees, as well as your deposit is much higher. So I always recommend to people, go ahead and just start low and, and make sure that you get the staggered overperformance clause in your negotiations, and that will really help you to reap additional benefits. Because if you don't ask for an overperformance clause, they will not mention it. All right? Thanks, Tracy. Ooh, that was a lot to take in. So um, I just want to move just really quickly through um, a couple of the other things. Uh, one of my favorite things, I get all geeked out about it, is uh, um, checklists and timelines. So it's so important that you start early. That's, that's one of the number of mistakes that we see is people don't start early enough. Um, so start early. Uh, I'm just going to give you a couple indications of like, a timeline for an event you're planning. So a, a two hour, um, plan at least eight weeks ahead. If it's a half day workshop, three to five months. Um, a three day enrollment event, uh, nine to 12 months. And if it's a cruise, 12 to 18 months. But one of the things that I love about you know, being <laughs> an Excel queen is structure. Um, it's wonderful to be creative. And the more structure that you have, the more freedom to create you have. Because then you're not stressed about other things. You've got timelines, everything's in place. So my big tip to help you stop feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and eliminate some of the fear of doing an event is, is have a timeline and have a checklist so that you don't forget anything. Um, and then I just want to briefly touch upon monetizing your event. This is actually really huge. And we, this is one of the things that we love doing with a lot of our clients. We've had clients that have ended up paying nothing for their event because they've got sponsors. And there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, I think uh, one of my favorite clients got, we got her, so I trained her team on, you know, how, you know, what kind of packets to do, how you enroll somebody in doing it. She ended up getting $25,000 in uh, sponsorship uh, between doing a VIP, uh, her speakers, having vendors, um, doing special reception and extra training in the evening. Uh, there's lots and lots of different ways that you can offset some of those costs. So it takes some of that, that risk off um, how much you have to pay. And everybody's different. And I, I just want to, you know, when we start talking about events, some people want to have, you know, thousands of clients and change the world. And some people just want to have um, a few people and they want to have small events or they just want to do retreats. So there's ways to monetize no matter what your, what your vision is and, and how many people you want to work with. But we, we love giving people tips on how to do that. So I want you to think, if you have, this is something you can write down, what are three ways that I could monetize my event? Could I get a JV partner? Could I have somebody else um, promote me? Could I have some affiliates? Could I do a VIP lunch that would offset the, the catering costs? Do I do a separate, maybe an additional day in the beginning as a private mastermind and, and charge extra for that that will offset some of the costs? So there's, there's lots of different ways because we don't want you to not do an event because you're afraid you can't afford it, right? Because this is really 
what we see is this is where you're going to have those deep transformations. And when people are together in a room, that's where you create that sisterhood and you, you create that bond for life. And they're, they're more likely to want to be part of your community and be involved when you're able to get them together in person. Um, Tracy, do you want to talk just a little bit about um, how to fill your event? Sure, yes, 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 yes. So, you know, you, it, with regards to influence, which is our topic for today, you know, to be influential, you have to be visible, you know, and unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, it's kind of that double-edged sword. With technology, thank goodness we've got Zoom. Unfortunately, there's always a challenge with the slideshow, but, um, <laughs> You know, it's like, it's like there's so many ways to be seen, right? And I mean, you can do, you know, email, speaking, meetup groups. You know, we like to make sure that our clients are using, you, you know, ask your existing clients for testimonials. Ask them, who do they know that you should know? You know, you can market through your own clientele base. Have them, you know, bring a friend as a referral. Um, you can do blogging. You can write. You can do sales funnels. There's a lot of different ways. But one of the really hot topics right now, and something that's really hot, I'm sure probably all of you guys are doing it already. Tracy and I are just gearing up to lean into this a little bit harder. But um, because we have developed a really great tool, and that is Facebook Live. So Facebook Live is hot. It is hot right now. It's been hot. And they just keep getting better and better. And with that, you can take a Facebook Live and you can actually repurpose it. Um, you can save it and then you can repurpose it to YouTube. You can repurpose it on your website. You know, you can do one, one Facebook Live and you could multi-purpose that. So, you know, think about when you're doing marketing or anything like that, how could you do something one time and like have multiple uses for it? As well as, you know, it's really just something where we find a lot of women on Facebook. It's a heavy demographic. So if your ideal client clients are women, more than likely that you're going to see some of that there. And the other thing too about um, Facebook Live is what we see to be very, very successful is when you actually kind of pick a topic. So you would pick a topic and, and we are going to ask you to do a little home play today. So our homework or home play for you, because we don't like work, we like to play. So your home play today is going to be to think of a hot topic that you have and maybe break up it up into like three different categories that you could do a quick, you know, three minute Facebook about it. Like, you know, how to do something or how to create something, or maybe, you know, there's a lot of different topics that you can choose depending on what your vision is and what your overall um, ideal client is. So think about what kind of information can you share with your ideal client that they would, they would think is really hot and juicy, right? Like, you know, what would they, they see it one day and then they are there the next day because they want to see the second tip they want to see the third tip, right? And then you can actually save those three, you know, put them into YouTube, put them on your webinar and just have them be like, you know, the three hot tips for, you know, creating space in your life, right? How many women are overwhelmed, right? So, <laughs> or feel that way. So look at what could be maybe a hot topic for your ideal client. And then really and truly, it doesn't have to be perfect. Progress versus perfection. Technology is ongoing. So it doesn't matter, you know, people love you and they want to see you and they want to see the real authentic you and visibility is going to grow your influence. So um, we also have a bonus today that you could, you know, possibly have if you choose. Um, we have our Passport to Success Facebook Live formula to get massively visible because we do believe that right now in the market, this is one of the key tools and, and it's not, it's not hard. So we have, if anybody thinks, oh, I can't do that, it's like, if we can do it, you can do it. So, oh, um, Thanks. all right. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, um, I, I'm just gonna like roll through some of this other stuff. Um, so as, as far as agenda and flow, that's very important when you design your actual event. Uh, there's different types of events. So there's, there's feeder events, like small, you know, speaking gigs gigs, meetups, things like that, or you're in front of people and you're directing them to your event or you're directing them to a strategy session. There's um, enrollment events. This is where you actually design it with the sales process in mind from the beginning um, to create a whole experience so that people want to work deeper with you. Um, there is fulfillment events. So once they've jumped into your program, um, you know, one of the things that we always recommend as a super hot tip is include some sort of retreat or workshop or cruise or whatever in your program 
uh, because then you get them into that, that um, experience of being away from their regular life so that they're more open to making a deeper connection. Um, and that's the fourth, you know, a destination retreat or um, cruise. So when you're thinking about what you want to do and what you want to create, um, you need to include all of those components because everybody wants something different. Um, Tracy, can you just talk a little bit about uh, support teams? Well, um, so our seven, number seven out of 10 is really hire a kick-ass support team. You don't want anybody mediocre. Your team is an extension of you and your brand. So, you know, one of the things we see with great leaders is they identify really what their key strengths are, and then they hire people to do the other tasks. And they make sure that those people really understand their brand and who they are, because again, that's an extension of who they are. But, you know, to really expand and grow, you're going to need support. And so it may be just a personal assistant. It may be somebody on Fiverr. There's a lot of different options to get support. So just look at who you can hire and who's really great to support you in those other areas. Awesome. So I want to talk just a, a little bit about leadership. And I had a beautiful slide for this. You guys would have loved it. I think oh my gosh, we had a great slide. Well, well, <laughs> Well, we'll send you the PowerPoint after and you can look at all the pretty pictures. <laughs> but really, um, as a leader, you need to be strong. You need to be confident. Um, and everybody has those, those moments of self-doubt. And it's important. And this is what's so valuable about communities like this, where you have a mastermind, where you have um, other people, mentors that you can lean on when you have those days where you're like, oh, man, everything sucks right um and also friends and you know one of my friends is youtube and i just wanted to share with you two two things that when i'm feeling really down i put this on and it just kind of reminds me um is anybody is anyone familiar with Brene brown's um uh the man in the arena speech yeah so that kind of reminds me when i hear somebody like criticizes i'm like well you know what i'm the one out here doing it and you're not so i'm not going to listen to what you say right um, and then the other thing that I really love is um, Mel Robbins. She has the five second rule. And when I'm stuck or I'm trying to make a decision, because part of being a leader is you have to be decisive. You've got to feel into it and then you've got to make a decision and you've got to be in action because that's how you create. And uh, you know, Abraham always says it takes 17 seconds to build momentum on a thought. So if you find yourself going down that self doubt road, Stop yourself with a five, four, three, two, one, and plant, plant a new, a new thought. Right? That's how we switch it around. So you go down that that wobbly, <laughs> wobbly road. My sister always says that you know your mind's a dangerous place. Don't go there alone. So it's like do do a switch. But what I really want you to understand is that what what is really um, hot right now in the industry is is honesty, vulnerability and integrity in your authentic self. So don't compare, don't try to be anybody else. Don't say just because there is no cookie cutter. Like one of the reasons that we customize uh, how we work with everyone is because everybody wants something different and everybody has a different business. So it's important to realize that you are on your own path and the people that are meant to work with you will resonate with you and that is how you're going to build your tribe. Don't try to be anything else. And when you feel yourself going down, reach out, right? One of the things with, with solopreneurs is we feel really lonely. It's one of the biggest things. And so building a tribe, building a community, helping us feel connected where we feel supported is priceless. So I just want to mention that. Um, that kind of ties into creating connection. And I know you guys are all experts, but there's all kinds of different techniques to create connection in the room so that, um, you know, not only with the Facebook Live, but when you're actually in the room at an event. Um, so we've got, we've got some tips, you know, that we can share with you if you're interested um, on how you can do that. Um, I do want to talk, and without the slide, this might be a little confusing, so I'm just going to touch upon it really quickly. Is anybody familiar with relationship strategies? How about DISC? or Meyer Briggs, 
or the anagrams or the colors, right? So these are all personality quadrants. Um, and the ones that I teach are around the birds. So the reason that I teach that is that they're very easy for you to understand um, what type of person you're speaking with because you need to adjust your communication style to connect a way to people, a way that people want to be spoken to. I, so I can show you a slide. slide. There you go. <laughs> Yay. Um, so what that does is that helps you create connection with somebody because what I like, you may not like. So I'm just going to give you like one example here and then we can move on. So if you are an eagle, then you are very results orientated. You're like, okay, what's the bottom line? Get to the facts, boom, 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 boom. If you're a dove, then you're very relationship oriented. So if, if I'm trying to connect or sell to you or build trust with you, I need to treat you very loving. I need to listen, I need to slow down, I need to lower my tone of voice. I need to really make you feel like you're connecting with me. And if I talk to an eagle, then I want to be really bottom line. So this is what we're going to do for you. I speed up my, my pace. I, I adjust so that they can understand what I'm saying. When I'm talking to an owl, I want to be very detailed. I want to give them the step by step slowly so that they, they can process it because they process things differently. And if I speak to them like I'm speaking to a peacock who is like all about excitement and they talk really quickly and they go from one idea to another, you're going to lose them and they're not going to hear anything that you say and they're not going to see how you can help them with their life and grow their business. So this is a whole separate training that we do, but I just wanted to point it out because it really helps with connection with your clients, with your teams, um, with building connection in a room and with sales. So we'll switch over from that. But thank, thank you, Tracy, for getting that. <laughs> okay, I'm able to fix this now so you can actually see our beautiful slideshow. Um, <laughs> number 10 is all about like creating a movement. And you know, we want you to be aware that you're all unique. You all have your own special gifts, your different dreams and aspirations, and you can make a big impact. And really, we have our favorite quote is by, oh, we don't have it. Sorry, our, our, one of our favorite quotes talks about how you can make a difference, just one person can make a difference, you know, and whether it's in your community, it's a community impact, which spreads, you just never know, you know, that seven degrees of separation, you could go viral with just helping one person. So it's really about being more than yourself and helping others. So now we're just gonna go really quickly to our three tips of what to not do. So we've talked about what to do, now we're gonna talk about what to not do. So the first one is, now see how cute these slides are? Don't you wish we had these the whole time? <laughs> Failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. So we talked about this briefly at the beginning, but really our number three, what to not do is, you've got to make sure that you are creating your event with the end in mind. Know your offer. So knowing your offer is really like a starting point and what we've experienced with so many different, not a lot, but a few leaders is that they wait until like the event to figure out what their offer is. So that causes a lot of, of just kind of anxiety, if you will, and it flows into the event. And so you've got to make sure that you know your offer and that you have time to rehearse so that you're really clear, so that your clients, as you're seeding throughout the entire event, again, you get to a point where when you make the offer, it's just like, like, they're like, oh, finally, yes, this is what we've been waiting for. You are the answer. So we just think that as far as, you know, what not to do is, you know, you want to make sure that you don't wait until the very end to know what your offer is and start with that offer, your gift that you're going to be sharing with the world at the beginning. Thanks, Tracy. I, I think another, what, so funny, because we keep saying this backwards, what to not do is um, not leaving enough time. And we, we kind of covered this a little bit earlier. You really need to have a timeline. You need to start a lot earlier to think. Um, and, and it's not only the, the time um, to, to put the event on, it's the time in the event. That so many people try to cram too much information in and there, there's no ability for people to actually process and integrate. They make the events way too long, so you're exhausted. They don't give you long enough breaks, so you feel like you're running the whole time, so you can't network, and you can't 
um, meet with other people, which is one of the reasons you want to be in the room. So there's a lot of things around timing and having the right timing that can really um, make a really big difference for your, for your business. And then last but not least, you know, what to not to, don't do it alone. You know, we're all becoming a little bit more isolated with regards to our solopreneur working environment and then, you know, also with technology. So, you know, make sure that you have your support team, you know, whether that's just your one assistant or whatever, however small or large that is, you definitely need to make sure that you are not doing it alone. You want to set yourself up for success and make sure that you, you know who can help you with the key pieces to make sure that your event or retreat is absolutely dialed in and it is totally successful. And so I know we're gonna go into, we have our bonus for all of you staying to the end today and that is our 10 hot tips to unlock savings at your events and retreats because everybody wants to save money. So if you email us at info at blissedtravelandevents.com, we will send this document right on over to you and you can review some of these tips a little bit more in depth. In addition to that, we have created a special opportunity for those of you here in Jessica's community because we love you all and we know that you guys are incredible leaders. And so we are going to offer each and every one of you the opportunity to meet with us at, with no obligation for a blistastic because we are live your bliss travel and events so everything is blissful and blistastic <laughs> and blisterific i know i'm just making things up as i go <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we're offering each of you an opportunity to do a 30 minute um uh, blistastic event and retreat review session so whether you already have an event planned right now or you're looking at your next event or anything in between that. If you've never done an event and you just want some information, we will review your event concept and vision. Um, we'll help you to create you know, your a clear plan for your next best steps, depending on where you're at in the process, as well as with some custom strategies for cutting costs. And it is a $250 value that is complimentary for those of you on the call today. And to do that, you would just reach out on our calendar and you can book me. And when you do that, because you are Jessica's people, we will give you two extra bonuses. Our juicy bonuses are the Passport to Success Facebook Live formula to get massively visible, and our cheeky checklist for an event or retreat. So all of that and a 30-minute review session just for being with us today and because we value you and really our mission is to support leaders to create unique transformational events and destination retreats and change the world. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I just just popped into my head, you know, came to me is that we, we don't want to make it hard. You know, we, we work so hard and a lot of us don't put time or fun in our life. And you know, this is one of the reasons that we we are are moving a big focus and we're seeing a lot of people are moving towards you know, doing events at sea is that they get to go fun, amazing places. They get to write it off. They get to be with their friends. And then when the, when their clients come back, they're so over the moon. Oh my gosh, I went here and I did this. They had a big transformation. So it's, it's just incredible to, to make sure that you take time that you're enjoying your process. You're enjoying your process of putting on the event and being at the event and, and being with your, your, your tribe, you know? Um, so we're, we're excited to be able to support you in any way, whatever it looks like, whether you want to work with us or not, it doesn't matter. Our, our whole thing is that we want to support women because women are rising together and we want to be part of that. And we want to make a difference to the planet and to the world. And we know that you are the type of leaders that are going to do that. And so we want to support you in any way that we can. Um, so with that, I uh, just want to open it up to Q&A and just thank you all for being so patient. And um, we hope that you learned something new, that you got one nugget that you could take away with you today that would um, make a difference for what you create in the future. Nice. Thank you, Tracy's. I just, let's just take a big breath of appreciation for all that you're doing and all that you are giving to the community thank you so much 
Thank you. Thank we, you so we much. Love you. We love you. Yeah. So fun. We love you guys. Yay. Does anyone have any questions, additional questions? Or, or? I actually have a question. Um, when you were talking about the, like when you're on a destination retreat, that conversion rates are 61 to 73%. And I and uh, I have a clarifying question, and then based on what you say, I have a follow-up question. Are you saying that when you offer a destination retreat, people are sixty-one to seventy-three percent like conversion rate? That's the likelihood. Or are you saying if you offer a program during a destination retreat, people are that likely to sign up? That's a great question, Amanda. So the clarifier is we were talking about if you are on a, if you are at a destination or at a retreat and you make an offer at that event, that the conversion rate is 62 to I, I'm like I'm not looking at the slide. Um, yeah. 62 to 71 70, to 73. 70. Yeah. So to to clarify that it's it's when you because one of the best times to make an offer because you always want to give people an opportunity to continue to work with you. Yeah. Right. And once they've had that experience and they're feeling that deep connection to you and that sisterhood with the other women that they're like, I, you know, I want to be around these other women forever. You mm -hmm. offer them another opportunity. So yeah. You offer them another cruise or, or the next level of your program. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're saying is that those big, you know, like your bigger programs, your year long programs, that is the best time to get a really high conversion rate for that. Mm -hmm. and cruise, a lot of times they'll book the next cruise. They're like, okay, right. I'm going one right right and then so um but then usually the cruise is is a kind of a high ticket item so the the challenge is to get people into the cruise itself right well, because that's not a cheat it's not like a hundred bucks or you know it's nothing nothing that they're just going to be able to have a quick quick yes to so um that that's just one thing i was curious about like how to get them into the retreat in the first place if you have some ideas about that but also then are you suggesting that from the destination retreat that the offer that you make is something even bigger like a bigger ticket item than the cruise itself mm -hmm. yes this is where you get them into your year long so you want to do micro micro yes steps so you always want to take into the next yes mm -hmm. right so you've got them, and, and one of the, the tricks, I think I had mentioned it earlier as a tip, is that you include the cost of the, the cruise or the you know, Hawaii trip or whatever in the program. So this is for people like, yes. this is where we help you with your mindset and setting the right you know, pricing programs. So you want to, you'll find out exactly what the, the cruise is going to cost you, and then you build that into your program. Yeah. And so just the experience that we're having with a lot of our, our seminars at Sea programs is it is more of a year long program, six months to a year long program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have two different examples. One is a very high end where they're doing like a luxury and they put that at the end of the program. So it's a year long program. They start off at like an enrollment event. They enroll. There's a couple of other small events. They do some zoom. They do some other activities. And then like towards the end, this community is already connected and had experiences, but now you're going to take them on this adventure of a lifetime, right? That is a workcation. It's a write-off. And they go on this trip, and the connection that they already have with these people just expands and creates, like, when people go, you know, and they go hiking in the rainforest, and they meditate at a sacred waterfall, or they go swimming with the dolphins, or they do an impromptu scavenger hunt through a small town looking for items that they come back together and create something. I mean, there are so many fun activities that you can do that those are memories and moments in their life that they will never forget. And it is all linked to you and your program. And so when you make the offer for the next event, the next program, they're like, sign me up now. And you always have that next offer available so that they can take those next steps with you. And with the cruise, we break it all up into payments. So, you know, the optimum time for planning a cruise is really about eight to 12 months out. Number one, there is not as much group space. I mean, cruising is really becoming hot and they're building more ships that have space. 
but to get the best space and the best pricing, you want you know lead time. And then from that, you will go in and, and you'll make your marketing and do all those things, but you break down the cost points so that as they're paying for your program over time, they're paying, shipping away at that big cost of the cruise, and it really it makes it very affordable. And there's lots of different levels of pricing. You know, they have three days that are just local, and then they have seven days that are farther away, and you can, you can do land and sea together. I mean, there's so many different variables, but it's always, we find that we get the, we get the best uh, results and our clients are the most happy when they have the lead time to include that price in their program and nobody's sticker shocked and they're just enjoying the program and looking forward to kind of that, you know, mm -hmm. closing, you know, ceremony on the beach on their cruise. Mm -hmm. You know, and another thing, I just want to add this, Amanda, is I know that we've, we've kind of talked about it is, you can create, um, you know, like <laughs> we've just come up with this name, the leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Come on the leadership and you would have, you could have four or five different coaches on the same ship. And then you only have to teach for one day, right? Because somebody else teaches the next day. You've got multiple um, clients from all kinds of different areas. So it gives you more exposure. Um, there's low risk and we can, you know, people are interested in cruising, we can tell you about that. But it's a very low risk. You don't have to put any money down. So, you know, for I think eight months, you don't have to put any money down or six months or something. So it's low risk. So you can say, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll take 10 cabins. And then if you don't fill it, there's, there's no fee. Unlike with a hotel, you know, there's no fee. You're just like, okay, that's gone. And then you can add. But so there's lots and lots of different reasons why people are moving towards that. You know, they don't have to pay a lot of times for AV, you don't have to pay for food, you don't have to pay, you know, there's a lot of different reasons, but grouping, you know, getting a group of people together under a theme is another really popular way that people are starting to, to use cruising. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank you. Great question, thank you. I think mm -hmm. we <laughs> we get excited about it. Is that the longest answer? And Yeah, okay, so um, are there like any it. other questions? And make sure that you're unmuted if you're talking. All right. Well, we know that we went a little over time today, so sorry. I, I have a quick question. Again, if nobody else has one, um, it's a little technical one, but you said it was really cool to hear it because I've wondered about all these Facebook live streams that I've done. Uh, can you go back to former live streams on Facebook and still upload those to YouTube? Yes, and YouTube is actually a huge new um, way of marketing. Um, and it's also, if you if you have your own program or your own, um, what do they call that? Channel. Your own channel. Yeah, no, not your own channel, but you, you have your own like website or your own community yeah. area, you can post it in there at, for training. So you can say, as part of my program, you get this and then some of those YouTubes or webinars that you've done, you post it in Facebook, I mean, in YouTube on your channel, and then that can be given as free gifts or it can be part of a larger program that you offer. Cool. Awesome. Great Thank question. You. I have two quick questions. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Lena. Thank you so hi, much. Hi, Lena. Um, I'm wondering about, you mentioned the three kinds of events, the feeder, enrollment, something else, and a destination. Could you fill in oh, that? Okay. Yeah, the, the, so there's, so when a lot of times when you do a year long program, you do, you start off with a feeder. So you get all the people, you direct them to your enrollment event, right? And then in the enrollment event, you sell them into your year long program. And in that program, you include a retreat or two. And that becomes a fulfillment event. So you're not making money on that, you're fulfilling your promise of the program. Mm -hmm. That's the fulfillment event or retreat. Okay. And or retreat. So, mm -hmm. so it was feeder event, enrollment event, fulfillment event, and then retreat. And then retreat would be destination. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then, and then you had mentioned, thank you. And then you had mentioned the timeline of how long prior to, you said a two hour program prepare eight weeks before. And then mm -hmm. the next one I missed, it was. Oh, the half day. Half yeah, day. the half day. And of course I can't remember that. I think it was six to Remember offhand, Tracy, with that this week? I have in my mind also there's a, there's a promotion schedule, like when you should start promoting. Yeah. It's part of our, our timeline thing, so we just, because we were limited with time, we just wanted to cover, um, I can't remember where you put that. Let me find the agenda sheet, right? 
Yeah, on the agenda one. Okay. So I mean, got no, but you know what? We're sorry, Lynn. We have a so lot of information. Oh, you've got oh, plenty of time, by the yeah, way. You've got five months for a half day. For questions. So. I'm sorry, what? We've got plenty of time. We've got 10 to 15 oh, we do? Okay, let's look and see okay. if you can find that information. Yeah, so it's three to five months for a half day. Um, and then uh, nine to 12 months for an enrollment event. And then 12 to 18 months if you want to plan a cruise. Because that, that gives you the, um, we call it low risk space. You don't have to pay anything. And you've got plenty of time to kind of seed it up and see people. Yeah, we really recommend eight months minimum if you want to get prime space and also have the space to hold your your conference training or whatever it is you want because there's not as much space on it. So, thank you. Awesome. We're finding too on the cruises is you know there's lots of different ways to do it. Some people just do like, um, hey, we're going to do a luxury girlfriend you know self care cruise. Well, we're not going to teach anything. We're just going to have fun the whole time. And you can bring your family and your husband. You can write it off. And, you know, so there's like all kinds of creative ways that you can like incorporate cruising. And I know a lot of people think when they think of cruising, they think of the, the booze cruises in the Caribbean. But there's lots of other different ways. There's river cruises. There's, you know, small yachts. There's castles. Be, being, because we're a travel concierge, we own our own travel business. So we can get you anywhere in the world we can get you a castle we can get you a private yacht we can, you know so there's yeah, it, your imagination is the only thing that limits you and that's why i wanted to get you in the beginning to start dreaming like what would my my big vision like three four years from now what would i love to do what would i where would i love to take my ladies you know i love it i have a question mm -hmm. what do you have have you found um a certain cruise companies or cruise ships uh, are more conducive, user-friendly for you to work with? To, like they really want seminar leaders, they really want to have things to offer um, their uh, passengers. Like if you're going with the, some of these mammoth ships that have huge numbers and huge, it, is but it better it, to do a smaller yeah. cruise ship or one of the bigger ones? It really just depends on how many attendees that you want and what kind of facility you want to host in. So when you have a smaller group, they usually will use some of their side um, uh, space, if you will, like you might be in, um, you know, the chapel as opposed to the conference room. But you can, they'll always provide space for you. They always provide chairs and set up. And I mean, the, the people that work on the cruise ships, they are so amazing because they love their job and they're grateful for it and so they go above and beyond to do anything that you need so what happens is we actually are we work with the different cruise lines so part of our initial consultation when we talk to people is about you know who are your ideal clients and which brand actually really is the best partnership for them you know where do you want to go what type of experience you know we have clients that are like my clients are five star and they want all vegan food and they want to have yoga and blah, and we're like, okay, we know exactly what brand that is, okay? And then we have other clients that are like, our clients are young and they want to dance every night. We're like, okay, we know exactly what brand that is. And then we have all in between. And then also it just depends on, on really like timing. So there, um, it really, we don't choose the brand based on what the brand wants. We choose the brand based on what the client wants. Does that make sense? Because yeah. all of the brands, all of the different shifts, all of the different brands, they want groups. Now, some of them have more space and some of them give more amenities, but we know how to work the system in that if we're booking in advance, we always get the best pricing, okay? And then we watch their cyclical sales and we can combine our best pricing with all of their promotions. So you can go out and you can market specifically be like, you know, buy, if you register now, you get these additional bonuses. So we kind of help with the whole marketing cycle. We want to make sure that you're aware. We want you to, we want all of the clients and the guests to get the best value and all the perks we can. And then the ship gives you perks based on how many people, how many cabins you have on board. So I saw someone said, oh, you get, you get a cabin for so many people. Well, yeah, sometimes you get a cabin and then at a certain point you might get other amenities. And so it's our job to kind of work with you and say, you know, 
you're going to go on a cruise and you're going to do this X, Y, Z. This is the brand that really is going to give you the best value, the best bang for your buck. And then we, you know, we do all of the investigation and research to find out all of those other pieces for you. But um, every brand right now is on an uptick because cruising is having a huge swing up. Um, they're up leveling their food, they're up leveling their service, they're up leveling their beds, they are in high competition and they are building ships because more and more people want to cruise and many of those cruise ships are now going to have conference space. So it's, it's just growing. And you know what's really interesting is um, in Europe, if anyone has a desire to go to Europe, um, they are now banning you being able to use those suitcases that you can pull along because it's damaging the roads. So the great thing about going on a, a cruise, say, in Europe, is you can go to five or six countries and pack and unpack once, right, and have completely different experiences. So that's why it's really hard for us to come up with a blanket answer, because we have to be really clear on what's the experience that you want, what, what kind of transformations, and then we help pick activities that enhance whatever transformation you're trying to provide. So, but great question. We, so you said they're banning. What are they banning? I forgot. I didn't hear them. The roller suitcases. The roller suitcases. You know, on oh. the. Because they're breaking the cobblestone to Italy, oh. so you'll have to carry your bag physically carry it. So, and I, I mean, I've been to Europe many times, and I, I, I do enjoy it, but I'm not like a backpack kind of girl. <laughs> and so schlepping my bags up and down the stairs in a different hotel every day it doesn't make me happy so I love getting on a ship and just packing and unpacking once right and so every day I wake up you know in a new port and I get to go out and experience everything that I want and I come back and I go to bed and I wake up in another port and I don't have to pack or unpack or worry about buses or trains or anything else so it really is about like what kind of experience do you want for your clients what kind of activities do you want to create? Because different destinations uh, are aligned with different brands. So are you gonna have 5,000 people on a ship? Then that's a different experience than if you're gonna have 16 people on a ship. Well, and also what we find is one of our, our, our popular ones is the Hawaii cruise, because it takes you from island to island, and it has one of the longest times of you on shore. So, you know, you can be on the boat just to travel between the islands, and then you've got a different island to explore every day. You know, so again, that's why we would need to, to find out what your region is. But yeah, good question. Thank you, Christy. And I'm curious how, how that works with the scheduling. You know, if you're, if you're doing trainings or, you know, getting together with your people, how are they doing fitting the tourism in? And, and all, does it, how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah, so it just, uh, again, it depends on, it depends on the actual um, itinerary, all right? So, um, so many of the itineraries have what we call sea days, you know, where you're actually at sea. So normally on the sea days, you would do like content days, like those would be more of your longer training days. And then on the port days, you can either do an interactive activity uh, in the port together. You can schedule some type of, you know, just fun activity or you can allow free time and also have some learning time. So you can do optional activities. So it, it's just, it really depends on how much content you have and what you're training on. And we definitely always recommend that they have, you have at least one or two group activities. What's great about the ship is, is every single night there's something going on, right? You know, from movies on the deck to dancing, to comedians, to Broadway shows, and all that's included. So you can do anything on the ship and it's all included with your original fare. But then if you go off the ship and you want to book a group activity and like create something unique, like for example, we just did a cruise where we got off in Coronado and we took the bike over, we rode bikes over to the Hotel Dell, which if you're not familiar with the Coronado, but the Hotel Dell is this amazing hotel where presidents have stayed and it's on the ocean in Coronado. And we went, we rode bikes over and had lunch and we rode back. And everybody just thought that was so amazing, right? And it really just, people were laughing, and some people were on the, you know, tandem bikes, and other people were on the surreys, and they were racing, and it was just, it was just an activity to, like, you know, build community and have fun. So you can do things like that, or you can do, like, a scavenger hunt where all the items that they're looking for tie back to the content that you're training them. So again, that, that links and adds value and really shows people, like, oh, wow, you know, I can interact all of this within my daily activities. And it just, 
it creates a, a totally different knowing for those individuals. Hmm. Thank you. So Terry, we can talk to you about any specific locations that you want, but it all goes back to itinerary. And so when we when we decide where we want to go, then we look at the itinerary and we're like, okay, here's the hours. Now of these hours, what do you want to do training in? And then we work with, we actually work with the, the group concierge on board to coordinate all that before you even get on the ship to make sure there's space and everything's set up. Thank you. Great, great question. I, I know that we're way over our time. But <laughs> no, you're great. Yeah, you still have four minutes. Okay. okay. Four minutes yeah. Yeah. It just, your answer helps me visualize, you know, what's possible in a way, too. Yeah. Sure. And, if, and if you want to expand on any of this, Christy or Terry, I mean, feel free to, like, sign up for a call, and we can go more in-depth and get more information about you and exactly what you're looking to do. Um, because there are, there's, it's like the possibilities are seriously, seriously endless. Like, anywhere you want to go, anything you want to do, you know, you can do it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? I think we're coming to a close. Well, we just want to say thank you so much. And we hope that, you know, whether it's with us or, or with someone else, or don't do it alone, <laughs> but commit to yourself that you're going to do an event. Whether it's, you know, five people in your living room, or it's, you know, 20 people in a retreat center, or you're going to step out and be more visible and, and do an enrollment event, do a larger enrollment event where you get to create that transformation. Whatever it is, you know, keep events and retreats in your mind as just one of the best and fastest ways to grow your business mm -hmm. and build that connection and create that influence and change lives one life, uh, change the world one life at a time, right? Right. Yeah. You can okay, do it, ladies. Okay. Yay. Thank Thanks, you Jessica. so much. Tracy's love you and uh, blessings on your, what you're creating and just want to um, make sure that, you know, the, the women who are on the call, like there may be some questions that pop up later. Uh, make sure that you copy the links that are here because the chat does go away. I don't know if the, I know the call is recorded, but I think the chat goes away. So make sure that before the call is ended, you've copied these links and that you reach out to them. Um, I've definitely been really inspired and I'm working my way towards figuring out how to do a big medicine cruise. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was intimidating, but I like it. I'm glad, I'm glad you're pushing me beyond my comfort zone. And I just want to send some love and appreciation to Jessica yes. for holding space for us and just send some blessings on your throat and your voice and <sighs> so you're not talking like an 80 year old smoker. <laughs> uh, and uh to all of you who are inspired to you know let's just take a, a breath for ourselves <sighs> a breath for the our our lovely bliss tastic tracy tracy team <laughs> <laughs>